Tower Defense Simulator has a lot of towers, some very good, some very bad. And now I want to look at some of the top tier towers in the game. One of the absolute best towers has to be Minigunner, an iconic tower class being in the game since the beginning, and one of the strongest, especially when you consider the Golden Variant, which is some of the highest damage in the game, along with no placement limit, a big factor giving it an edge over some of the other top towers. It's one of the towers I consistently use for most challenges, and definitely one of the faces of TDS, along with Commander, being another very strong tower in game, and the real face of TDS. Yes, even being recreated as a real-life piece of merch. The tower itself is a pretty straightforward concept, but with its Call of Arms ability and tons of unique skins, it's definitely a standout. But another OG tower is Cowboy, which used to be one of the best towers in the game before getting heavily nerfed, mainly because of its money generation mechanic. It was recently reworked with the Badlands update, however, and it now consistently pays money rather than the previous random generation. But the trade-off is a reload mechanic, which seriously limits its damage. It's an interesting tower, and although its DPS isn't the greatest, aesthetically it's definitely top tier. But what about good towers that are a little weirder, like Electroshocker? This is a tower that's pretty overlooked and possibly underrated. It comes with a taser and steadily gains more electrical equipment throughout its upgrades, allowing it to stun zombies in long chains. But it's not a tower I've used a lot and to see if it really is that good, I took it in game with the other two towers to see how it would stack up. One problem quickly became apparent, which was that the tower doesn't actually do damage. It only gains the damage stat at level 3, which meant for the early game it was completely useless. So I just skipped waves as fast as possible, and by saving all my money I was eventually able to get Gold Minigunner down with only 17 health left. This reaffirmed the power of Gold Minigunner as it essentially carried me for the next 30 odd waves, along with the support of a commander and Electroshocker. However, I did eventually start to struggle, only barely killing some stronger zombies, which is where Electroshocker shined, as I placed 3 more near the end of the game, and the sheer amount of stunning worked very well, actually allowing me to reach wave 40. And unlike some other elemental towers, the final boss is actually affected by the Electroshocker's stuns. Slightly. I spammed Commander's Call of Arms ability, but even so, things weren't going very well. The boss got past the first group of minis, causing me to have to hastily replace them. And as the Molten Boss progressed further, it continuously used its spawning ability. But after replacing the minis again, I actually did kill the Molten Boss with my 3 tower loadout, proving that Electroshocker is at least a decent tower. But for more opinions, I asked my group what the best towers in the game are. One of the more popular opinions was Farm, a fundamentally essential tower for most loadouts, supplying the money necessary to get some extremely expensive upgrades like those of the Accelerator, another top choice. Accelerator is perhaps the strongest star in the game, with extremely high DPS. It's very strong and capable of melting even the toughest endgame bosses, like the Ducky Doom, the Nuclear Monster, and even the Void Reaver. But it's also less reliable than the Minigunner, having a very long charge up time and pretty weak early levels, meaning that you need a solid supporting loadout to really make it work. Still, it's hard to obtain stats, and high stats definitely make it one of the top towers in the game. Some other good towers include Gladiator and Goldcrit Boss, two towers both very powerful in the early game, but also fairly adaptable late, and each with a special ability making them even stronger, like the Gladiator having its Warrior's Call ability, and Crit Boss having its special bodyguards. But then a tower which used to be very popular is Turret, themed around the concept of pure damage, with no special ability other than its raw stats. It used to be one of the best towers in the game thanks to its high DPS, but over time it somewhat lost relevance, as it has never been fully reworked. Turret is extremely expensive, and has limitations like its larger placement size and limit of only 5, leaving it outclassed by other towers like Accelerator or Gold Minigunner. But finally, I want to look at another tower I've come to like in Sledger. I used to rate this tower very low. After using it to beat Pollute Wastelands, I've come around to it. Its freezing ability is extremely helpful, similar to Electroshocker's stun. But unlike that tower, it does real damage as well. Also nerfing zombies it freezes to take more damage. It's another good supportive tower, but one that can also pull its own weight, and definitely much better than Freezer. But even still, TDS has a lot more towers, so subscribe!